Today we shall learn how easy it is to deploy a highly available Kubernetes environment on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure using Oracle's Container Engine for Kubernetes, OKE. OCI is the only public cloud provider which provides the capability to run bare metal Kubernetes clusters. Running Kubernetes and containers on bare metal machines show 25 to 30 percent performance improvement for both CPU and I.O. operations compared to running them on virtual machines. This makes it suitable for running big data and HPC applications on bare metal Kubernetes clusters. In this demo, I shall demonstrate how to quickly and easily create a Kubernetes cluster on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and further, I shall showcase how one can achieve significant performance boost by running applications on OKE bare metal instances, and then compare it by running the same workload on OKE virtual machine instances. At a high level, this is what the setup looks like for the demo. We will be creating a highly available Kubernetes cluster with two node pools spread across three availability domains within a region. The first node pool consists of three nodes of VM standard 1.4 shape virtual machine instances, and the second node pool consists of three nodes of VM standard 2.52 shape bare metal instances. We will be deploying Apache Spark on each of these node pools, one at a time, and measure the performance of the cluster by running some Spark jobs using Zeppelin. So let's get started. This is what our deployment flow is going to look like. We will start off by creating a three node Kubernetes cluster with VM standard 1.4 shape instances using OCI console. Then we will go ahead with deploying Apache Spark and Zeppelin pods on this cluster and measure the performance of the cluster by running some Spark jobs. After that, we will scale the number of replicas of Spark worker pods and again measure the performance of the cluster. At that point, we will add another node pool containing three nodes of VM standard 2.52 shape instances to the same Kubernetes cluster and repeat the steps 2, 3, and 4. Finally, we will compare the performance of both the node pools and draw inferences. On the OCI console, you can deploy a Kubernetes cluster by going to the Developer Services tab and clicking on Container Clusters, OKE. Then click on Create Cluster. This is where you fill in the details of your Kubernetes cluster by specifying the name of the cluster, the version of Kubernetes you want to run, compartment details, VCN, and the subnets needed for the load balancer if you want to expose your application as a service. As you can see, I already pre-created the VCN and the subnets to host my cluster. I'm also making sure that Tiller is running on my cluster. Now, I go ahead with creating the node pool by selecting the VM standard 1.4 shape instances running Oracle Linux 7.5 and placing them in the necessary subnets across three availability domains. This completes the creation of the cluster. Next, we shall proceed with deploying Apache Spark and Zeppelin pods on this cluster. We shall start with deploying Spark Master and Spark UI proxy pods. We see our Spark Master is created. Now we shall deploy three replicas of Spark worker parts. Finally, we shall deploy one replica of Zeppelin pod and expose it as a service. So this is what the CPU and memory allocations for this cluster look like. To recap what we have done so far, we have created a three node Kubernetes cluster containing one pod of Spark Master and Zeppelin and three replicas of Spark worker pods. Now in the next step, we will be connecting using Zeppelin UI and initiate a Spark job and measure the performance. The Spark computation we will be running involves finding out the number of prime numbers in a data set involving natural numbers from 1 to 100 million. 
If you look at the CPU and memory allocations per part, we have allocated 1 vCPU per part and 1000 MB of memory for Spark worker parts and 200 milli vCPU and 100 MB of memory per part for Spark Master and Zeppelin. We will make sure to keep these allocations the same for all the tests we'll be performing on this node pool and also on the bare metal node pool which we'll be creating further down in this demo. Now we shall create a notebook on the Zeppelin UI and run the Spark computation. We shall see that for a three replica Spark parts, it takes 387 seconds to complete the computation. We shall now scale the Spark worker parts to six replicas and again measure the performance of the cluster. This time it takes 354 seconds to complete the computation. This completes a performance test on BM standard 1.4 shape node pool. At this point, we will be adding a BM standard 2.52 node pool to the same Kubernetes cluster and then deploy Apache Spark and Zeppelin parts, just the way we have done in step two. We will be using Kubernetes labels to ensure that we have node affinity such that the Spark parts are deployed only on BM standard 2.52 node pool and not on BM standard 1.4 node pool, which we have created earlier. Going back to the OCI console, we go back to our cluster and click on add node pool and select the instance shape as BM standard 2.52 and deploy three nodes spread across three available D domains. Now you can see both virtual machine and bare metal node pools on the cluster. In the interest of time, I have deployed three replicas of Spark worker parts and one replica each of Spark master and Zeppelin on this node pool. Now we shall go ahead and run the Spark computation on this node pool and measure the performance. As you may notice, but I have not changed the vCPU and memory allocation for the parts. It is exactly the same as what we have seen for the tests we ran on BM standard 1.4 shape node pool. We again connect to the Zeppelin UI and run the same computation. This time you will notice that for a 3 replica Spark worker part cluster, the computation finishes in just 74 seconds. We shall go ahead and scale the replicas of Spark workers to 6 and 20 and measure the performance again. We observe that the computation happens significantly faster on a BM standard 2.52 node pool, although the vCPU and the memory allocation per parts 
for both BM standard 1.4 shape node pool and the BM standard 2.52 node pool are identical. Let's now find out why we see such vast performance differences when running Spark jobs on bare metal Kubernetes clusters. With no hypervisor overhead, the containers on bare metal perform up to 30% better. This definitely adds to some of the performance benefits we have noticed. Second, the packing density of containers on bare metal instances is very high compared to those on virtual machines. This causes better resource utilization and performance gains as there are minimal network traversals for inter-container communication, which is very much needed in a typical big data workload like Apache Spark. Third, the bare metal instance shapes come with extremely fast NICs. A BM standard 2.52 instance has two 25 gig NICs, while the virtual machine shapes offer slower NICs. In our demo, VM standard 1.4 shape offers 1.2 gig of network bandwidth. Although the bandwidth of virtual machine instances does scale linearly as the size of the instance grows. Lastly, OCI container engine for Kubernetes is the only managed Kubernetes offering in the public cloud provider space that lets you create a node pool of bare metal instance shapes in a Kubernetes cluster. As shown in this demo, you can create independent node pools of virtual machine shapes and bare metal shapes in the same Kubernetes cluster and use Kubernetes labels to intelligently route high performance computation workloads to bare metal node pools and the rest to virtual machine node pools. Having this flexibility is extremely useful. Thanks for watching the demo. If you need further information, please check out the resources below.